Hi everyone, this is Nova. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to connect your blocks to Ableton Live 10 and uh, get started with MIDI mapping. This is just how I MIDI map uh, my controllers, so there are obviously lots of other ways you can do it, but um, it's the way I like to do it and I have been doing it. I hope this helps and please do consider subscribing, I've really appreciated it a lot. Right, let's get to it. Right, so the first thing you want to do is open this uh, application called uh, Rolly Dashboard and connect your blocks. You can do that via USB like I've done here, because it's just easier for me. Or you can connect them using Bluetooth. Right, so once you've got your blocks connected use, uh, into the Rolly Dashboard, you should be able to open up Ableton. And it should be able to send MIDI data just like that if you just on the track. Get that little red thing down there. And then should be able to play. So I've got this um, simple kalimba patch loading the equator and if we want to record something we can just click on the tab. Now we can record something in. Ready? Just like that, we've recorded something in. You can also send MP data, let me just show you. And look, if you play that back, it will have recorded the MP. It's just you can't edit the MP, so you have to be quite precise. Obviously, there is a way around this, and in the new Ableton, you can. So, yeah, I'm just using the old one. So, that's a seaboard sort of setup. But what I like to do, so obviously, I want it sending MP, but you can change it to single channel if you don't want MP being sent or you can mess with the sensitivity settings and in particular I like the strike sensitivity just turned down I don't because I prefer it being loud without having to press too hard and you can still get that quiet those quiet notes but you can mess with all that yourself and there's even fixed velocity there's lots of things you can do but that's how I set up my seaboard for Ableton and then moving on to the light pad. So in general, I just like to use a normal drum block. And I uh, I haven't made one yet because it's a new Mac. But I usually make my own custom 3x3s. Because that's just what I like better. So And obviously you can change the colour of that. Um, if you click edit, and you have all the colours here. So if I want that, say, I don't know, green and you can sort of change the green or something. That's just quite a nice touch and if you want to sort of make it more personal. And then finally, we've got the uh, loop block. What we're going to do is we're going to click, select the loop block, then we're going to click factory default, then we're going to select MIDI C, C mode, which basically means it's uh, allowing it to send uh, MIDI messages to other applications such as Ableton. That's, that's very important you select that, otherwise it won't work. Then you're going to click Live Preferences. Then you're going to go down to MIDI here. You're going to select your control surface, so blocks, and I've selected the Siebel block because it's all sort of connected. And you're going to have Track turned on and Remote turned on. Right. Then you're going to click the MIDI button and you select what you want to map. So for example, play button, I'm going to map my play button to this. So now it's when I play this, uh, press this button, it's going to send a MIDI message to press that button. So I'm just going to do this for the rest because I still haven't done this for this map yet. Now I don't like using the record button, instead I use the, uh, the capture button, which is this one here. So I like using this one instead, it just, that's my workflow. Lots of people prefer using the record button probably. So if you wanted live looping, uh, you could just use these other buttons to select the track by just clicking on the track, Or, but I'm probably going to solo it because that's just more helpful for me. Then what I do is after I've mapped all my MIDI, I'd uh, save this. So I go to Live Preferences, then I go to File Folder and where it says save current set as default, I'll click save. And now whenever I load up a live set, it will automatically have all these MIDI mappings. It just makes life easier. And also I've 
this live set has drums, chords, bass, leads already um, loaded up. So every time I load up a thing, it comes up with a drum rack, which is just handy. And you also, um, if you're going to change sort of the MIDI CC mode here, you might want to save this if you've got custom colors, if you've done the colors here. To save a new sort of mode, just click File, Save As. You can even save that as default mode. I'm not going to do that because I still want to change colors, obviously. But And also this works for light pad as well. So if you've made your own colors here, File, Save As. And then, yeah, they make a new mode for you and that will appear here. You can name it and then source. Right. So, yeah, I think that's just about it for my sort of setting up blocks with Ableton, how I do it. Uh, I'm sure there's better ways, and obviously with the new Ableton, it'll be much better because it actually supports MPE. And I use Logic for the side, and that's what I prefer anyways. I know this was a bit of a different video uh, to what I usually do, but I hope this was useful to some of you. And in the future, I plan on doing maybe some beat breakdowns, uh, sort of going through the beats I've made. And obviously I'll continue doing the stuff that I already am doing. And yeah, I think that's about it. So this has been Nova and thank you for watching.